Hello everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews, where we review books and authors in 10 minutes or less. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons and comment down below if you've got a book you would like us to read or and review or just want to chat about books. You can email us as well. We read voraciously. And we cover all kinds of genres. Again, not high literature. We're just covering the entertainment stuff. We're not doing the, the equivalent of the Oscar winners. We are doing the popcorn flick that got a 32% critics rating but made $100 billion because it was just entertaining. You suspend all your belief. You know, we're, doing, we're covering the equivalent of the Fast and Furious type of things. You know, obviously, physics don't exist and, and logic doesn't exist and plot holes are all over the place, but damn, is it fun. That's the kind of books we want to cover. Or just different genres, indie authors, stuff like that. So today, I want to talk about an indie author in a different sort of genre. This is one that my wife makes fun of me because I do read these. Uh, they're, they're, some of them are entertaining and some of them are very well written. And uh, this author is Bruce Centaur. S-E-N-T-A-R, I believe it is. I get his books for free off of my, my uh, Amazon, uh, my Kindle Unlimited. And uh, he's got a number of different, different series. He basically writes pretty much the same thing, but his writing just has gotten better. So it's actually entertaining to read. Um, it's urban fantasy, supernatural, you know, dragons and vampires and werewolves and all the usual urban fantasy kind of stuff, magic, all this stuff. Uh, but this series I want to talk about is called Dragon's Justice, and it's urban fantasy and also the harem genre. Um, so there's a lot of uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge type of scenes with multiple different women, um, but Dragon's Justice. If you like just, you know, a, a, a pulpy, pulp fiction type of just you know, kill a couple of hours and be, be entertained. Or if you like the harem genre, which, you know, is growing in popularity, people definitely like it. It's, there's a lot of books in that. Most of them really suck. Um, it's a good book. It's a good book. It's a good series. So it's, so far it's had four books. It's an ongoing series. And yeah, it's just, it's entertaining. I mean, you know, let's be real. Again, you got to suspend all kinds of belief. And then, you know, the harem elements are, of course, the harem elements. Uh, but most of those harem books and such like that, they're basically the, written equivalent of porn, like the, the plot suck and all that. This this is one of the ones, and the ones I usually talk about, actually, I might skip past the wink, wink, nudge, nudge stuff to get back to the main plot, because it's, it is well written. It, it really is. And in this case, we've got a character named Zach. He's a college student, um, gets into a little bit of the shit, and comes out on top, and in kind of a weird way. And that's his introduction to the supernatural world. It turns out he is a member of the supernatural world. He just did not know it which makes him, I think they called it a foundling or something along, along those lines. There's entire rules around it because the supernatural world hides itself and is very powerful, but hides itself. But they're all raised up within it. The foundlings or whatever they're called that are very rare didn't know they were supernatural until something triggers it. And that's what Zack is. Now, it's not going to give away any spoilers when I, say, when I say that he is a dragon since it's called Dragon's Justice. Uh, and that's where you get... That's where a lot of the harem elements come into play as well. Dragons horde and so on and so forth. Um, but he ends up being taken in uh, as a foundling. He has to be sponsored. So he ends up being sponsored by a very rich supernatural um, vampire elf that uh, um, is also not super well liked in the supernatural community but is very feared in the supernatural community and through, su through subsequent books it comes out why because there is a little bit of a war there used to be a war between the supernatural elements and humanity the crusades anybody um, and now things are hidden but there are still crusaders out there as an organized um, unit um, organized almost like a company or country of their own uh, that still continue the war, the uh, hunters and things like that. And then the supernatural police is itself, itself of course. Um, but Zack turns out to be a, a dragon and he, he works with his, his mentor that is a mercenary that's very, very feared. She turns out to be a, a, uh, a former elf sorceress turned vampire. The elves hate her because the elves say they're immune to vampire to being turned. Clearly, they're not. Uh, the vampires hate her because she's she tends to side more with the, or she keeps herself apart from from the supernatural community. Except as a mercenary, she does jobs for them. She does whatever they need. And and uh, throughout the series, you know, Zach and her get involved with trying to trying to stop a, an incursion. Um, the angels that are not good but very destructive, very deadly, serial killer, psychopath type. 
uh, from stopping them from being brought in by the Crusaders, uh, stopping other, uh, stopping an ancient god that wants to destroy the world. Um, and through it, they learn more about each other. You know, she was part of the original Crusades. She was a legendary warrior that actually killed a few, actually made it to the celestial plane and killed an angel or two there. Um, so it's legendary as, uh, as a warrior, which is why they pretty much, it's almost like a truce. They left her alone, she'd leave them alone kind of thing. Zack turns out to be, at first, a gold dragon, which then makes him, by, by tradition, the king of the dragons, which doesn't really show up until book three, book four. Um, where it also, book three, which I believe has the god, uh, also starts introducing the fact that Zack actually is both a gold and a silver dragon. And then it starts to show up in book four that he can actually be all the colors of the dragons, which makes him um, a, a legendary, a, a creature of legend, basically. And uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see how book five goes. You know, I haven't really given any spoilers around because it's, it's mostly the main plot lines that are, are really fascinating. But these, these subplots that go across the books is what's kept me hooked and what makes me want to keep, keep, uh, keep reading them. Plus, it's always interesting to find out which, which, which is the next female that he's going to add to his harem and thing, um, like a Salvation Army drum. But overall, like I said it's just it's an entertaining series. It really is. It's fun. It's it's uh, it's worth reading. You know, you guys should definitely check it out. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thank you everybody for watching. We appreciate it once again. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Leave us comments. Let us know what you would like us to read, what you would like us to review, or if you just want to chat about a book or ask for some suggestions, go ahead and shoot us an email. If you're just looking for the next thing to read, you can ask us too. If the reviews don't help you, otherwise, we will catch you guys next time. Thank you everybody for watching. Bye now.